What does a minimalist home mean? The aesthetic design? A minimalist taste? The cheapest items? The most basic functions? Or just living with no furniture? Minimalist home is different to different people, and minimalism in Singapore may look very different from the minimalism in the US. It should cater to what you need in life. To me, a minimalist home means every single item in the home should be put into full use without redundancy. It's simple and spacious looking, and most importantly, makes me feel home. I'm a proud home buddy, so I gotta make sure my home is very pleasant so that I don't feel tired of staying home 24-7. To achieve that, I've put in a lot of efforts to build this home alone. In this video, I wanna share with you some benefits of living in a minimalist home, as well as 5 tips on how to build one. Hope you enjoy. Firstly, why do you even need to set up a minimalist home? Is there a need for that? So there are three benefits of setting up a minimalist home. Number one is less housework. When you have fewer items at home, you don't need to spend so much time cleaning and organizing things. So that allows you to free up a lot of time for you to do other things that are more important to you. Especially living in international city like Singapore, San Francisco, where everyone is so busy, that will really save you a lot of work. Second benefit is cost savings. When you buy less things, you save money. But let me explain further. Many people have the misperception of minimalism being frugal. But in fact, most minimalists care about quality over quantity. Minimalists care about experience and sustainability over the number of physical things. So sometimes minimalist lifestyle is quite luxury, even though you see the home is quite empty. But every single item in the home is put into full use, either for health, productivity, or simple joy. So as long as your money is serving the purpose, either for health or a simple joy, you are not wasting any money. So going back to cost saving, why people say minimalist is cost saving is because let's say you are buying the same quality of items. If you buy less, of course you are saving money. Why waste your money on many things that you don't even need in life? The third benefit is to stay focused. When you have less items around you, you have less distraction and can focus on doing what you are doing. So for example, if you don't have a TV, you don't even think about turning on the TV and spend a night watching it. Maybe you spend all the time reading an article or doing exercise that are more beneficial for your life. Secondly, no more than the exact functions I need at home. To set up a minimalist home, first I ask myself, what kind of activities and functions I need at home? I need to sit, eat, work, and sleep. So I'm looking at the furniture and items that help me fulfill these activities and functions. My list is below. I will need a working desk and a chair, a sofa and a coffee table, a dining table and a dining chair, maybe, a mattress for sleep, and I may not even need a bed frame. Later on, I decided that I don't even need a dining set because I only have a 470 square feet home in Singapore where real estate is super expensive. I want to maximize the space as much as possible. I also decided not to have a bed frame because I live on a loft and the mattress is enough. For kitchenware, I live alone so I get exactly one bowl, one plate, one sauce plate, and a knife. No more than that, just minimalist living. Number three, try to look out for an item with multiple functions. So when I shop for my furniture, I always shop for the multifunctional one so I don't need to buy an extra one for another function so everything can be in that one thing. For example, I bought a sofa bed instead of a sofa. In the case of when my parents come visit in the future, the sofa is 2 meters long and long enough for my dad or me to sleep on and I can lay it down and make it a bed. Another example, I bought a yoga mat instead of the normal thickness. I got a 15cm thickest mat and it's also wider, 90cm, so I can use it for workout and also to sleep on the floor if I don't want to sleep in the low ceiling loft sometimes. When I didn't have a desk yet, I also used my piano as my desk, entertainment plus work for a few weeks. Number four, let's talk about minimalist aesthetics. I used to have a pure white theme in my previous home because white is great for making my tiny space look bigger but harder to clean. So for my new home, I decided to make it a blue theme, which is also my favorite color. I used the biggest furniture, sofa, to set the theme of my home. I like to keep my home as fewer colors as possible because too many colors will make it feel overwhelming. So how to do that? I use some wood elements and white colors to decorate the blue. They fit perfectly well because my sofa legs are wood texture and the flooring of my bedroom slash study room is also wood floor. It coordinates well with my coffee table and my bamboo countertop desk. 
For my other major furniture, I use white color to enlarge the feeling of the space and give you some minimalist sensation. Because my study room and bedroom is only 50 square feet, if I chose a black piano, it will make it more impactful and confined. And so I chose a white one as well as the white legs for my desk also. If you know just a little bit of theory about art and color, you know the contrast of blue is yellow. That's why I put a little bit of yellow. I enjoy sitting in my balcony for fresh air, so I got a yellow bar stool for my balcony. But be mindful, you don't need too much highlighting color like yellow, because if it's too much highlights, your main theme color will be distracted. The next tip is to keep your countertop empty. For all countertops, I like to leave them empty so it creates more of a minimalist feel and it gives you more space to think creatively because physical space does impact your mental space and thinking ability. For those items that you need to use all the time, for example, my iPhone charger cable, if left on the table, it looks super messy. I put a small storage to host them and I also picked the blue color to match the theme of my home. Besides all these DIY home building activities, I've also spent time developing my skills. Learning languages is always my hobby. When I was in school, Spanish was my second language, and I continue to use Rosetta Stone to learn other languages. As you all know, I just moved to Singapore from San Francisco. I always want to learn a Southeast Asian language, not only for cultural immersion, but also for facilitating business here. Rosetta Stone has been great for me to build such skill when I live alone. I picked up some Filipino tech law, Kumusta Kayo, so I have I have 12 month membership and the app allows me to learn as many languages as I want without paying extra for another new language. There are a lot of language apps on the market but most of them are only teaching you how to say the words without teaching you the skill. So I found Rosetta Stone is different because it really helped me to adapt in a conversation from the cultural aspect. If you want to try it out, I'll link it up in the description box below. There's no better time than the COVID time to really develop your skill set so that you can prepare for the international opportunity in the future. Happy language learning! Finally, I want to say that minimalist is a choice. It doesn't mean that minimalist is better than a maximalist. If being a maximalist makes you feel happy, go follow your heart and build a maximalist home. Life is very short, so do whatever that makes you feel happy. Alright, thank you for watching until the very end. Don't forget to give a thumb up and subscribe to my channel. Share my video with people who think may be benefit from this video. Check out my other relevant video in similar topic. If I can be of help for your personal development, do join my coaching program through kksuccess.com. See you next week.